then we can go on to the to the next talk, which is uh, by Philip uh, Philip Bloom, who will um, tell us a little bit about uh, the Web of Things and how the Web of Things can help to um, solve the interoperability problem for uh, IoT devices. And uh, yeah, Philip, just go ahead. Okay, just let me share my screen. Should work, right? We should see. Yep, see it. So, the web of things. Um, yeah, the the missing piece uh, for for interoperability. interoperability. Um, yeah, my my username on on Twitter, GitHub, and Stack Overflow is Citrulin. So, if you want to follow me, you can do it on there. Um, yeah, what is the web of things? It's Quite, it's actually quite simple. It's just a set of standards which makes uh, interoperability possible. I mean, we're currently having a lot of issues with all these different kind of uh, protocols like uh, LW, uh, M2M, and uh, OpenThread, and all these different kind of standards. So, um, but how is um, a node, uh, yeah, your device able to discover these things and uh, to interpret? them and the web of things is basically doing a similar thing as the world wide web having a layer to make communication between these devices uh, possible so how it's doing that is is quite simple uh, this is an overview of uh, of the architecture which looks more complicated than it actually is it's uh, just because uh, the web of things is um, highly flexible so we can have the low heat, we can see the direct thing to thing interaction, but we can also have abstraction of the web of things uh, thing description. I will talk a bit uh, about the things description itself uh, more in detail uh, later in this talk, but basically it's uh, just a format to describe a thing. A thing can be a physical device like a microcontroller in a right case or it can also be a virtual abstraction of a device so for example this might be use case where you might want to use uh, the digital twin i think they call it that way um is when you're having like yeah when you want to have backwards compatibility you you, you cannot update your your um, microcontroller, but you want to provide uh, the ability to take this uh, as a web of things. So then you put basically your edge device or even the cloud is abstracting these devices for you. So it's uh, basically the edge devices managing the thing description, which the microcontroller itself is not able to do. But eventually the the goal sh should be that, or one uh, use case uh, is also that uh, each device has its own thing description so that it's uh, discoverable within the network and that a device next by your router or something is able to to identify what kind of properties these, uh, this device has and how to interact with this device. Yeah, yeah. So the... The thing description is actually the point where it is really important for, for write OS uh, because it describes the device and it would be really nice to have an API in write itself, which makes it possible to generate the things description and expose it um, so that other devices can interact with the microcontroller. This is an example of uh, thing description. It's quite simple. It's just in JSON. It provides some some properties like an ID, title, some security definitions, and most importantly are these um, interaction uh, affordances. Like in property, properties, we have three properties: action and uh, events. So um, and yeah, and in this case we have a called status we describe uh, um, um, a lamp 
and this lamp has the property status. Um, you can uh, invoke the action uh, toggle and it has the event overheating. And it, here it's in the forms, it's described how to um, interact with it. In this case, it's an HTTP protocol. Uh, you can define the sub protocol. There are a lot of different sub protocols you can define. And also you can also define the data structure in this case, it's just a simple string, but it can be an object. Uh, it can be also described as COBOR or, or what the return type in uh, detail is, JSON, COBOR, something else. So it's highly flexible uh, in that matter. Um, yeah. Um, it also, uh, the standard also has a scripting API, which isn't finished yet, but it's quite interesting because the scripting APIs API is defining an API for for interacting with the thing description. So you're able, there is already one library written by the Eclipse Foundation. I haven't tried it yet, but eventually when I'm done with my implementation, I will also try it, of course. Um, yeah, you can, you can simply just consume the thing description as here in this example and uh, this is a JavaScript example, but can be also, of course, in other languages as well. And it's, it's, it's a simple programmatic um, interface for interacting with these affordances without any knowledge about the underlying protocols, which makes, of course, interoperability very interesting. And eventually, we had the talk about uh, Quick before. It's probably even really interesting to have then also quick on the microcontroller. This makes it then possible to, if of course routing is, exists, uh, is there for the microcontroller to the um, internet, then it makes it also possible to directly interact from your browser with the device. Currently, if we take a look on these protocols like uh, co-op, uh, browsers are not able uh, to to interact with devices uh, which use co-op. But with Quick, it would be possible. Just one use case, of course, it's highly flexible. So um, it's not bound to Quick or not bound to co-op. There is also these um, binding templates, which basically define or define a way how, how co-op, HTTP, et cetera, um, how they are defined uh, within the thing description. We have an example here. We use the we use the context um, property for that. You can see here it's just cove, and then you define uh, your your in this case core binding. There will be eventually also standard bindings for well-known protocols such as HTTP, co-op, etc. But you're using some kind of own protocol you have designed in in your environment, you are also able to to just uh, define how this protocol is uh, interpreted. So, yeah, and you can use this this um, this context you set then in your in your affordances. In this case, an action affordances as yeah, and use the proper uh, specific in this case, method or whatever your protocol provides so that the device, which is reading the thing description is able to know what is supposed to do with this endpoint. Yeah, so the integration in Riot, there is already some progress. I'm not done yet, but yeah, let's take just a look into the um, outside APIs. I split it up currently into uh, separate modules. I have the WOT uh, core, which provides basically the structure for, for the thing description. It works in a similar way as Sol works. So we have a linked list so that, so that you're able from anywhere inside right to define specific uh, properties of your thing. So in, in case uh, 
you need them somewhere um, across different um, modules. Uh, we have also certain APIs to add context, remove context, add props, uh, add and remove uh, different affordances, things like this. Just simple remove, find uh, API. This is basically the the core structure. And the, the upper layer, which, um, which I currently implement, the WT Web of Things uh, Corp implementation, utilizes the existing uh, NanoCorp integration in Riot and just extends it in a way that you basically define as usual your Corp resources, but also add some information about the affordance. And yeah, basically just define that uh, and use your Corp server as usual, just with an exposed Web of Things description. Additionally, due to that. So for the future, I'm currently working on on these two parts: WT, um, the core, and uh, the uh, co-op integration. For the future, for the future, I want to add a persistence layer so that um, the the thing description isn't uh, stored in memory rather than um, stored. <laughs> It makes more sense to store it eventually on a file system so that it doesn't need the device doesn't need to regenerate it over and over again when you restart it and uh, things like this so that the device just reads the data from the file system and uh, just output is directly to the network and of course also um, a sol esol uh, integration will be very interesting so that we we use existing the existing soul information in order to automatically generate endpoints, co-op endpoints, quick endpoints, whatever, uh, so that it's very simple to implement a simple sensor and exposing the the think description to the outside world with just a few configuration. That would be the goal with this integration then. So. Uh, if you're interested in supporting uh, the effort of uh, the thing description, there is a GitHub issue, so uh, you can join development, of course, and uh, financial contributions are also welcome so that I can focus more uh, on the development of the Web of Things because currently I, I wish there would be more progress, but I don't have time for that at the moment. So if you have any questions, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Philip, for the great talk. And um, yeah, let's Check see if we out. get some some questions. Um, in the meantime, I can ask a, a question. So, um, since uh, effort is about interoperability, um, I'm wondering if there are other implementations out there for for other operating systems that you already tested your implementation against. Um, no, there aren't in any implementation for other um, operating systems yet. There are some uh, proof of concepts for uh, Arduino, and I think it was also, I'm not sure if there was a test implementation for config, but a lot of test implementations, but not any serious development uh, yet. There are a lot of tools in uh, Node.js and things like this by the Eclipse Foundation, and Mozilla is also working on this. I mean, it's currently questionable probably because they fired a lot of people. So I guess they're not continue working on that, but yeah, there are a lot of tools around that. And I'm testing uh, against these tools. The, the Eclipse Foundation wrote uh, a validator for the thing description. I'm testing against that. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see. And um, before I hand over to, to Christian, uh, I would be interested, do you have some um, preliminary numbers regarding the footprint, memory footprint uh, of your implementation? Not yet. Not yet, okay. Um, okay, then Christian has a question. 
Yep. Um, do you see this as viable for as a as a thing a web of things consumer as well within Riot? So, um, how much would it take to instruct a Riot device to just act on this particular thing and derive from its thing description how to act on it precisely, or to trigger this affordance and then it derives that it should send this or that co-op request? I, I so so. You interact on 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 the affordance, on the action affordance, and I, I don't get your question completely. Yeah. Um, if if there is another web of things device in the network, and I yeah. want to tell my Riot device to um, say switch on that light bulb, however that's implemented for this particular light bulb, is this viable code wise or size wise um, for from Riot or is Riot is the route device only used as a thing here that pro exposes a thing description? Okay, okay, okay. Uh, okay, get it. Um, at the moment, it's only that uh, Riot exposes the thing description and that some kind of a gateway or mobile phone within the network interacts with the light bulb or something like this. It's not currently um, not in the implementation that the the right device is also able to pass the thing description and act on on it. Not yet, but it's a good question. I haven't asked this myself yet, to be honest. So to ask whether it's generally viable would be probably a bit premature. Yeah. Uh, okay, and then we have a question by Matthias about uh, why using NanoCorp instead of GCorp. There is actually no reason for that. I just worked with NanoCoop before, and uh, yeah, that's why it's implemented now with now the Coop. But I mean, eventually it can also be implemented in in G Coop. I mean, that's the the great thing about the microkernel, right? <laughs> Uh, so yeah. and then there's another question by by Michael. Yeah. Michael, do you want to to ask yourself, or should I read it? Okay, I can I can read it. Um, so Michael is asking what is currently the recommended way to expose the sync description from the descriptive device itself. In which sense does do you, on which? Protocol like HTTP co-op or something like this, or also how how the endpoint where it should uh, where it should be at. I mean, it's it's similar to um, the the standard describes it in a similar way as um, yeah as an index HTML file uh, HTML. So from the current point of view, I would just put it. Uh, into the root document and just accessing the device IP root and getting the things description so that from there uh, the, it's able to, the, the device is able to what find actually, all I mean, the other endpoints. Is, what I actually meant is, is there some default um, path or some, some default point where you would look for this description, like if other devices would? Oh, I, I, I haven't seen that in, in the in the thing description documentation. It's not. I also looked for that. Maybe I just haven't found it yet. Um, but I, I I just I we couldn't find anything. Used, used it in a project for a similar thing, and we exposed the thing description as Seabor uh, encoded. Pretty pretty small. It was uh, it worked kind of nice, but we it, this point was not really defined uh, at that point in time. And I thought maybe nowadays there is some. Definition: How how you would expose this uh, in uh, with a co-op co uh, yeah, node? Yeah, it's not in the standard of the thing description, but maybe it will be in another standard in the future. I can't answer that. 